little tutorial here on uh, understanding motions and connecting different ways of representing uh, motion, at least in the context of physics. Uh, so we're going to have a series of exercises. A motion will be described in terms of position, velocity, or acceleration. In each case, you're going to translate the description of the motion into simpler words that describe how you would have to move to produce this motion. If it is not possible to reproduce this motion, explain why not. We're going to make sketches of position versus time, so x versus t, uh, velocity versus time, so v versus t, and acceleration versus time, so a versus t. I'm going to draw a picture of a track and a ball such that the ball will move with a corresponding motion. Indicate on your diagram the initial location and initial direction of motion of the ball, the location of the origin, so x equals zero, we're just talking about one dimensional motion, and what direction the x coordinate increases in, so the positive direction. And the first exercise has been worked as an example. So let's see what we have in our first example. So motion with a constant positive velocity. So description of the motion, move at a constant speed away from the origin. So I'm gonna start with the ball on the track, it's moving to the right, and it is moving in the positive direction that I've chosen for the coordinate. Um, if the velocity is constant, then position versus time is gonna be aligned with a constant slope. That slope of position versus time is the velocity. So the slope is not changing, so the velocity is constant. Velocity is not changing, so the acceleration is zero. So that's also constant. All right, constant zero velocity. So this is pretty easy, this one we can start with. That would be object begins and remains at rest. So let me try to draw a track within my limited art skills. I'm going to try to make this level so there's no acceleration, no initial velocity. That is going to be x equals 0 and that is our positive direction. Okay, so the object begins or remains at rest. So it is always at the origin. It is not moving and its velocity does not change. So all three plots, position versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time, are just straight lines at a value of zero. All right, motion with a constant negative velocity. Um, so before I dig into this further, in general, these cases, um, when describing motion, I have an initial position to think about, an initial velocity to think about, and um, constant negative velocity, I could have that be true, but have any number of starting positions. So there are actually like an infinite number of things I could draw for this, depending upon what I pick the starting position to be, okay? And also what that negative velocity is. There's an infinite number of choices for that. So uh, just to say that there is not going to be in general a unique answer for these scenarios. Even with this case of constant zero velocity, I pick the ball to begin to remain to rest at what I'm calling the origin, but it could be at you know, five centimeters over, one way or the other, and it would still be motion with constant zero velocity, which is just a weird way of saying at rest. All right. Constant negative velocity, I'm gonna write that as a description. Move at a constant speed toward the origin, or to the left. Okay. 
right, so I make my little track. There's x equals zero. There's my positive direction. Okay, and I'm going to start with the ball over here somewhere to the right, and it's going to start moving to the left. Okay, so I picked it to start over to the right and it's going to move over to the left, but not fall off the end. So I'm going to have position versus time, straight line, the negative slope. Velocity versus time is constant, negative value, it's moving to the left. And the acceleration versus time well, there is no change in velocity versus time, so acceleration versus time is zero. So constant negative slope, constant negative value, and then constant zero. All right, let's try some more. We see how much fun this is. Uh, constant positive position. That means the object is at rest to the right, as I'm going to draw it, of x equals zero. No initial velocity. So my track, boop, boop. direction that my coordinate increases, positive direction, there's x equals zero, and I'm just going to put the ball right there. Okay. Constant positive position means a value of x bigger than zero, and it just remains there. Since there's no slope in position versus time, the velocity is identically zero. Since there's no change in velocity versus time, acceleration is identically zero. All right. Constant zero position. It's going to look remarkably similar. The only difference is where does the ball start at? Uh, where's my track? indication for what direction that coordinate increases in. So that's my positive direction. And there's the origin, x equals zero. And that is where the ball has to start. And since it's not moving, that's also where the ball ends. So constant zero position. Position is always at zero. Position is not changing with time, so velocity is always zero. Velocity is not changing with time, so acceleration is always zero. Pretty humdrum. Okay, constant negative position. That is an object that is at rest to the left of the origin. So I draw out my track again, level track, so there isn't any acceleration to cause motion. Uh, and now I'm going to put my zero point there, there's my direction that x increases, x equals zero. Boop. All right, so the ball begins and remains to the left of the origin. So I'll have some constant negative coordinate value for the position. That's not changing, so velocity versus time is always zero. Velocity is not changing, so acceleration versus time is always zero. All right. Let me get a little bit harder. Let's start having some accelerations. 
some more things to think about. Uh, description of the motion. So now I want to move to the right. Uh, okay, constant positive acceleration. So I'm going to pick this uh, to be moving to the right at an increasing speed. So what is that going to look like on my track? Well, my track is going to be tilted. So one end is higher than the other. Okay. And I am going to pick my coordinate to run along the track because I'm lazy. Your choice of coordinates is always arbitrary. You should always pick the one that gives you the least amount of work. This is, in essence, a one-dimensional problem still. Um, so there's no reason why I'd have to introduce the complexity of having two spatial coordinates yet. We'll get there. So moving to right at increasing speed starts at the origin and give it an initial velocity in the direction I pick for my positive coordinate. All right, so my track has a constant slope, and that is in the direction that the coordinate is increasing. So I have a constant positive acceleration. My velocity is starting with a positive value, and it increases from there. So it's not at the origin, right? It's starting at some positive value, and then I have a constant slope. The slope of velocity versus time is the acceleration versus time. All right, if the speed is linear, so acceleration is constant, speed is a linear function in time, then the position has to be a quadratic function in time. So it's gonna be a parabola of some sort. And we have a case where it is moving to the right and increasing speed, so it has to cover a greater and greater distance as time goes on. So it's gonna start off shallow and get steeper. So parabola is gonna be concave up. All right. Constant zero acceleration. Um, so we've already done this before, but let me make sure that the words all make sense to you. You could do that in moving to the right at a constant speed. All right, so no acceleration. That means my track is level. Okay. And go to the right is my positive direction. That's what I'm choosing. And that is where x equals zero. All right, moving to the right at a constant speed and starting a little bit to the right of the origin. Could look like that, so straight line. And then the slope of position versus time is velocity, which is positive value and constant. Slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. All right, constant negative acceleration. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting more interesting. Acceleration can be positive. Uh, this part of the graph is negative acceleration. Not anything mystical or magical. It's no more surprising to you than you can have a positive coordinate or a negative coordinate. You can have positive velocity or negative velocity. You have positive acceleration or negative acceleration. And how do I draw this out? Uh, one way we can do this is have an object moving to right at decreasing speed. So slowing down. It starts off moving to the right and it slows down. So what is it going to look like in terms of my track? Again, I want my 
cordon to be aligned with my track. So there's my positive direction, and there's where x equals zero. I'm going to start the ball at the left end of the track and with a large velocity. Okay. All right. So the ball, as it's rolling uphill, it's going to slow down. The slope is constant for my track, so the acceleration is constant. There's going to be some constant negative value. Okay. That means velocity versus time. I'm starting off with some large positive value, and it is going to slow down over time. So velocity versus time could look like that. It's supposed to be a straight line. Sorry if it looks like a curve. And then moving to the right at decreasing speed. That means it is going to be covering a larger distance initially, and it's going to slow down over time. Okay. And that graph could look like starting at the origin at t equals 0, something like that, quadratic function. That is starting off with a steeper slope, and that slope is getting shallower and shallower and shallower. And I'm stopping the motion when um, the ball comes to rest for just an instant. Because then actually it would come to rest and it would start to go back down my track. I'm not worried about that yet. Okay. Maybe a little bit more mind bendy. Um, there are several answers for most of the situations in the previous problem. Find at least one other answer the three motions repeated below. Okay, so constant positive acceleration. Okay, that could be uh, an example where I am moving to the left at decreasing speed. In our first attempt at this, we came up with the idea of moving to the right at increasing speed. I could also have causative, constant positive acceleration if I were moving to the left and slowing down over time. So my track. Origin direction the coordinate is increasing, so that's my positive direction. That's where x equals zero is. I'm going to start my ball going up my inclined plane. So positive acceleration means this velocity is initially to the left. It's going to become more and more positive over time. So since it starts off with a negative value, I first have to grind that velocity down to zero, which means the ball will come to rest for an instant. And then it's going to reverse direction and start rolling down the inclined plane. But we're going to stop the motion right when it reverses direction. So a constant positive acceleration the velocity is the slope of acceleration versus time. Uh, so I need a positive slope. So I'm going to start with a velocity that's negative. And the motion is going to continue until it gets to v equals 0. So there we see I have my positive slope for velocity versus time. And that gives me uh, an acceleration versus time uh, that's constant. Now, position versus time. It is going to be moving fastest when it is uh, earliest in the motion. And then when it motion is ending, it is going approximately zero until it comes to rest. All right? And I'm starting off with a positive position, and the position is coming down to zero. So what is that going to look like? It has to be moving fastest early, and the slope is smallest later. So 
so that could look something like that. Okay. Steep slope initially, downward, going to no slope at the end. Okay, so position versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. A case with constant zero acceleration, so another case, uh, another thing that we could pick, instead of moving to the right at constant speed, could have an object that is moving uh, to the left at constant speed. That's not too hard. All right. My track needs to be level, so there's no acceleration. There's my origin. There's my positive coordinate direction. Okay, we'll start off over to the right and moving to the left. Okay, so constant speed, that means there's zero acceleration. So acceleration versus time, flatlined at zero. Moving to the left at a constant speed, so that is a negative velocity, but it's not changing with time. So I have a horizontal line at some negative value. And then position versus time, it's starting over to the right and moving to the left. So I need to have a straight line, something like that. Okay, so that's also a motion that would have a constant zero acceleration. All right, last one. We want another example that would be constant negative acceleration. Before we did moving to the right at a decreasing speed, we could also do this then moving to the left at an increasing speed, be a constant negative acceleration if we keep the same sense of our coordinate direction. All right, so moving to the left at an increasing speed. All right, I need a negative acceleration, so I need my track to be tilted. So the left end is lower and the right end is higher. Okay, and we'll line things up like we normally do. That is where x equals zero is, and that is my positive coordinate direction, and we're going to start with the ball on the right side with a small velocity to the left. And then the acceleration of the track is going to make it go faster and faster and faster over time. So a negative acceleration that's constant, maybe some constant negative value, okay, that is the slope of velocity versus time, and I'm starting with some uh, left pointing velocity, so some negative value, and it's going to get uh, more negative over time because it's going to get faster and faster to the left. So this needs to have a downward slope. That downward slope is the value of the acceleration. All right. Then position, it needs to be moving slower initially, and it's going to move faster and faster and faster to the left um, as we get later and later in time. So as time goes on, the position is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. It has to get steeper the further we go in time. So something that could do that would be a quadratic that looks something like that. So it starts off moving slow, and then it's moving fast. So the slope of position versus time is velocity versus time, and the slope of velocity versus time is acceleration versus time.